Okay. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome back to Big Board. I thought <clears throat> it might be worthwhile having a chat about this game. Because now that I have an entire, you know, goof around turn, and then uh, the 11 o'clock turn, the 11.30 turn, and now we're doing the uh, noon turn of the Battle of Waterloo, I have an entire three turns under my belt. And have uh, noticed some interesting things that are potentially not showstoppers by any way, shape, in any way, shape, or form, but that are just curious to me. And um, it could be missequencing in my gameplay, it could be misinterpretation of the rules, it could be uh, misapplication of the rules, of course, which you know, goes part for the course with, for me, uh, etc. But, here are the three things that I'm noticing. First, uh, first off, and which is a kind of a subtle thing, and I'm not 100% certain that it's, it's you know, wrong or right. Uh, you know, Hugomont over here, which you can't see where I'm pointing, over here. Uh, I found it incredibly easy to bounce the unit out of there. I, I did accumulate a fairly significant uh, group of artillery and we barrage the daylights out of that location up on this ridge. There's a ridge here and it's one of the few games, Waterloo games, actually has this little ridge line along here. Many, many games do not have this. Fallen Eagles does not have this ridge line here. And it seems to me that the ability of, so there's four things, <laughs> the ability of artillery to change formation seems a little too easy and formation changes are plus one movement point for infantry, plus two movement points for arty, and zero for cav. Okay, so it is plus two. So there you go. I just solved my problem. So I have, on the first turn, I move these guys just fine. Second turn, they've probably moved too far. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to back these bad boys up to hexes. So see, this is why we do these videos, because sometimes... We just find out things by talking about them and then looking on the screen. And so that kind of brought me to my second point about the artillery, which not only did I think they were moving too fast, but that I thought perhaps that they are slightly upgunned or overgunned, as the case may be. When you take the, the fire value of six, for every hex of range out, you drop a fire factor, so five, four. So we're shooting with a strength of four. And we're going to drop that down further because it's, uh, you know, it's fortified or whatever the case may be. And fortified for fire effect is going to gonna be minus three. That right? So that'll make it a one. And then I think, I think the way the rule reads is that I, I can only have one stack of units attack. So this... Strength here would be a strength of three, five, four, minus, minus, I'm just looking for the table, minus four, yeah, minus three would be one, and then there is well, one, two, three units there. Well, that guy would be a zero, so it would just be a strength of two. And I could not combine this guy and fire at him, nor could I uh, combine the infantry. Which well may explain why over on Hugomont over here that we, we cleared that so quickly because I think I may... Actually, no, I didn't. I did use two hexes worth of artillery, so that was probably a, uh, an oopsie on my part. Oh, now we're going to have to set it up and start again. All right. Regardless, though, once we get this artillery up on the hill and we fire five, four, three, Three, assuming these guys weren't here because you can't fire over the top of your guys. Five, four, three. And this is a sunken road here, and that's going to have a uh, minus one line of sight through it or not into it, though. So there's no loss there. So it'd be five, four, three. Three and three would be six. I'm firing I'm almost the max table. I knocked out uh, a British artillery unit. These guys, 
and also these guys by using using the artillery along here. Uh, very powerful. They also responded in kind. They fired defensively and they shot uh, shot back and did some damage. But you can see, look, we're step loss, step loss, disordered. So because it's disordered, I don't believe we can uh, jump into a square. And even if you could, you still got to make a morale roll. And so these guys failed the morale roll. I was trying to give them a chance. So they're going to be charged. These guys formed a square and we declined to do the charge with those chappies. I, I voluntarily disordered them here and they had to retreat two hexes. And we're in turn three, so we put, a, we put a, a marker across them like that to denote that they're disordered and that they are uh, disorganized and they are going to uh, have to count turns forward from turn three until they can uh, recover. Over here, a little bit further up, we're doing a cavalry charge here as well. And these guys failed their morale roll of five. Which is kind of sad. So they're probably going to get pummeled. Um, and then over here we're doing a, another cavalry charge. And uh, I could not find anywhere I found a counter that said post charge, but I could not find any rules that talked about post charge where you're blown afterwards and at the end of the turn you've got to do a rally and roll against your morale to kind of get back into formation or whatever the case may be. So that was kind of awkward and, and a little weird and I'm probably missing a rule somewhere. But these guys attacked, uh, I believe we attacked here or maybe here. I forget now. But we charged, made these guys retreat, they took a step loss, and these are heavy, these are, uh, uh, they're the Hussars or something, I can't see it from here. And, uh, and now we're having another, another charge into this lot. So this will be another two to one attack, which is pretty good. These guys contemplated doing a, uh, doing a counter charge, but they would have been attacking at one to two. And that would hurt. One to two would be bad, bad, bad for everybody. There's nothing good that comes out of, well, if I rolled a five or a six, there'd be no effect. I'd still have to take a morale check. Um, so, you know, that would stop the charge, I guess. All right, well, we'll see. So that's kind of what's going on. Now, so while we're here, why don't we roll for that charge? I rolled a four on a two to one. That's going to be uh, one step loss on the attacker and a D disorganized from a tree to hexes for the bad guys. Do I get any other bonuses or anything like that? I don't. So these guys have a retreat two, one, two, and they're going to be disorganized and they're in turn three. So we're going to pop this guy across them here. These guys lose a step, but they won the fight. Where's a one? It's a one, it's not clipped, so the top unit loses one. They can advance into that hex if they want to, and they shell. They convert back into column. And I'll just put that next to there like that. And that is what I believe happens there. Now, we've already done all of our uh, uh, firing and shooting and bits and pieces, the defensive fire and offensive fire and stuff like that. Um, so we can, we can, what I'll do next is resolve this, but look, you don't want to have to see all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to uh, call it quits here and I'll, I'll pop an update on the blog or Facebook or something like that uh, show and show you what happened. Talk to you soon.